Good morning, church, and happy Easter. I know that um, we're kind of having this weekend in less than ideal circumstances. I know it's really hard to not be with family, to not be with friends, to not be sharing a meal together or or whatever the case may be, whatever you do on Easter Sunday. I know this is really difficult, and um, because of all this, I just want to start off today with a word of prayer before we get into my short devotion today. So if you'll please um, bow your heads and pray with me. Father God, we come to you in this time of uncertainty, this time of doubt. We, we understand that there are a lot of people that are worried about their jobs, they're worried about their financial situation because of this pandemic and because of this lockdown that we've been um, put in, Lord. Lord, we just lift all of these uncertainties, all of these doubts to you, Father God. Look, Lord, we look to you for comfort. We look to you for resolve. We know that you are bigger than this pandemic, Lord. We know that you are bigger than any illness or any ailment, Father God, Lord. We bring this to you and we pray for our church. We pray that when this lockdown is over, Lord, that we'll be able to come together stronger than ever, that we will be able to continue your mission and continue to grow. And lastly, Lord, we pray for the leadership of this country. We pray that you will give our president guidance. We, you will give our president wisdom. This is not an easy time to be a president, Father God. So, Lord, we just pray that you will comfort our president and you will be with him in all of the decision making and that you will be the, at the helm of our country, Father God. Lord, we pray this in your name. Amen. So today I'm going to be doing a very short devotional um, that we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 2 verses 29 to 33. Uh, so if you can get your Bibles out and get to um, that verse quickly. And I am just going to be reading through the verse and then just sharing some thoughts. Um, what I found going through this verse and why I chose this verse. And yeah, so Acts 2 29 to 33. Brothers. I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ that he was not abandoned to Hades nor did his flesh see corruption. I love that. This Jesus God raised up and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into, hev into the heavens, but he himself says. Here Peter is talking to the eleven as well as the disciples who had just seen the resurrection. They had just seen Jesus after the resurrection. And for me, this must have been an amazing sight. These people standing together, they're talking. Peter's preaching. He's talking about, um, about the resurrection. And I can't help but think about God's plan. There's God's plan for saving us. And the amazing thing here is just this is all according to God's plan. I mean, we can see David foresaw it. We, we've seen this in the Old Testament. I mean, I think my favorite picture of salvation and saving is the story of God leading the Israelites out of Egypt and I just think like out of this horrible place to the promised land I just think that's just an amazing picture of of God's willingness and his will to save his people and I think this is something that we as a church can take comfort in this time and this weekend remembering the death burial and resurrection of Christ was all part of God's plan for us. He knew from the beginning that we needed a savior. He knew that we were dirty. He knew that we were filthy. And I think this is echoed in verse 31 of our passage when David foresaw this coming. And you see, the thing is, we were never righteous. We were never worthy of God's grace. And I think my go-to verse for this is in Isaiah 64. I love this verse. It's a bit harsh. But it's also got a good ending to it type of thing. Um, let me just read it to you guys. It's Isaiah 64 from verse 6. Um, all of us have become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf. And like the wind, our sins sweep us away. 
No one calls your name or strives to lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. We are all the work of the Lord's hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. And I, I love this, the, the, this passage in Isaiah. I mean, the beginning, it's this acknowledgement of, yes, we are dirty. Yes, we are filthy. We need Jesus. We need our Lord God. And then at the end, at the end of verse, uh, the beginning of verse 9, it's, do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. It's this yearning. It's this begging. Lord, don't be angry. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us. We pray for we are all your people. I love that. Do not remember our sins forever. And God made a way. This Easter week, well, not this Easter weekend, a couple thousand years ago, God made a way by sending his son to die on the cross for our sins, for all that would believe in Jesus Christ. The Lord has made a way for him to forget and forgive us of our sins. And the passage is quite hectic. The first couple verses is quite hectic. We as humans generally don't like being told or admitting that we are wrong or that we have something inherently wrong within us. It, it goes against our prideful and sinful nature. It, it's just, it's really difficult. And, but as we close of looking at this passage in Acts, we can always be reminded that God is sovereign and we have comfort in knowing that the enemy has been defeated and the Lord's promise of receiving the Holy Spirit was fulfilled. I mean, let's read the last verse in Acts um, um, 32 to 33. This Jesus God raised up and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. And that's fantastic. It's awesome. It's great to know that we have the Holy Spirit within us. It's great to know that God has made a way. He has forgiven us. And I think I'm going to end off right there with a word of prayer. And I want you guys to just think about it. Look at, look at ways that you can confess your sins and edify your lives where you are right now. It's a really difficult thing to do. Um, but I really think it's important. I mean, we had this discussion on Wednesday night with the young um, um, Bible study group, or us, like young adults. I don't know if I'm that young anymore. But um, yeah, we had a discussion about it. And really, like, it's, it's really important to confess our sins and to acknowledge where we are going wrong so that we can cry out to Jesus. We can cry out to the Lord to help to forgive us, to edify us, to change us, to help us in this process of repentance. And I, I think I th it's, it's, yeah, it's great. It's a really, it's a really cool, cool thing that God has made that way for us. And I am going to close off in a word of prayer. And at the end of it, I don't want you guys to just turn off the video and carry on. I'm going to end off, but I want you guys as a family, if you guys are watching this as a family or friends that are on lockdown together or whatever the case may be, I want you guys to just carry on just to pray together. If it's for our country, that's great. If it's for yourself, that's great. If it's confessing your sins, that's great. If it's just asking God for forgiveness, that's great. But I want us to be praying for our country, ourselves, our sin and our church continuously through this time. And yeah, so let's end off in a word of prayer. Father God, we are a broken people, Lord, that need your grace, that need your salvation, Lord. And you made a way for us. By sending your son to die on the cross, he was without blemish. He was like a lamb led to the slaughter, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. We, we thank you for sending your son, Father God. Lord, as a church, we just collectively pray for our country once again, Lord, that our country will get through this pandemic. And, at, and on top of that, Lord, our country will see you at the helm, Lord that you were in charge, Lord, that you were in control, Father God, Lord, that anything that happens in this time period, Lord, can end up being a testament to your sovereignty, to your power and to your grace, Father God. 
Lord, I pray for our church that you'll be with us through this tough time, Lord, that at the end of it, we will come together and we'll have a great time of fellowship, Lord, that we'll have a great time of worship, that we'll have a great time learning and reading your word, Father God, again. Um, once again, I thank you for the gift of technology that we can still do this and that we can still share our thoughts and devotions in this time, Father God. Lord, I pray forgiveness for our sins, Father God, Lord, that, that you would help us as a congregation and as friends and as family be more open about where we're struggling, Lord, that we can talk about our sins more openly with those that we choose to, Father God, that we can repent, that we can change, and that we can start working towards the holiness that you set out for us, Father God. Lord, I thank you for this weekend. I thank you for sending your son to die on the cross and, ri and rise again for our sins, Father God. Lord, it's a beautiful thing, and I I'm so happy that you made a way for us, Father God. I pray all of this in your name. Amen.